it's your character's line in the movie. The numbers are, are, are the key to everything, and, and that's certainly true in Hollywood. And this movie opened at twenty four point eight million. It's your sixth best opening, and I don't know whether that's something that still gives you a thrill or whether it's something you still are anxious about when a big movie opens. You know, this movie, I, I'm very happy with the, the result because, for me, it's a, it's an adventure into a new genre. I've been hoping to open the door to science fiction and I feel it's one of the few ways that a film actor can express himself in an abstract uh, landscape and have audiences still be willing to go along for the ride. I'm interested in imagination and what it, the esoteric may or may not be and it's hard to do in other genres and still connect with audiences. There's also the added effect of you know not having to have a gun in my hand and shooting people which I was growing tired of um, so I can still entertain you and give you some escape but not have to resort to gratuitous violence. It is a, a very uh, beautifully atmospheric movie and has that sort of Twilight Zone kick to it at times it gets close to dangerously close to M. Night Shyamalan and it kind of ends like a, a Scientology wet dream when, where everything just sort of works out the way I think Tom Cruise would like it to work out. Were there certain aspects of its theories that you kind of related to because our boy does not believe in God, and, and by the end, he, he does believe that there is a, a greater plan. Um, you know, any of my personal beliefs or opinions uh, runs the risk of impinging on your own relationship with the movie. I feel that movies are best uh, left enigmatic, left um, raising more questions than answers. I don't want to ever preach. So if that's what you get from the movie, then that's far more interesting than anything that I could offer. The, the turning point in many ways from, from Indie Darling to a, a blockbuster uh, beefcake would have been 96 with The Rock, and you just won the Oscar for Leaving Las Vegas. The Rock kind of launched a, a new career that suddenly you were major box office. Does that surprise you? I think of that young, stiff kid who, who played Smokey in, in Rumblefish, and I'm guessing that kid would be stunned to realize that 26 years later, your money, like you are major box office material. Well... When you, when you reference Rumblefish, and that is an interesting reference, you know, I was working in my uncle's movie. I, I hadn't changed my name yet, and I was sort of at the epicenter of a lot of, um, uh, you know, feelings amongst the other actors that I was only there as a result of my uncle, so that I wasn't really capable of doing it. It wasn't until I changed my name and I went into audition on Valley Girl that I felt liberated, that I felt relieved, and I, was, I could breathe. So I think it was almost like a transmutation of, yeah, I've, I'm not the same guy. I have been able to breathe again by changing my identity of, in some way with my name change. I think I needed to do that because it enabled me to do what we're talking about now. I know when you once spoke to David Bowie and you asked him about this, how he sort of kept it fresh, and he just said he never let himself get comfortable. And, and this idea, just uh, as a kind of a feed from that, I know Lars von Trier had a conversation with Bowie, and he spoke about the fact that, Bowie spoke about the fact that he had to pretty much let go living on the edge, otherwise he was going to die, that he had to sort of settle into a family life. And, you know, after the 70s rush of just changing every year and doing so many drugs and, and so many wonderful albums, he would have burnt himself out completely, and he made the choice to, to live a good life, as way as De Niro has and Elvis did and so many... I don't know for you if that's a sort of an option now, because when you think of those early days, eating cockroaches, working with David Lynch, being quite, quite the eccentric guy and, 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 and sort of feeding into that, whether you feel now that you're a father and you've got a you know, family and you've got a, a very solid career, whether you've mellowed and, and you feel the need to be a bit more, put life first and the art becomes second? No. <clears throat> there, you're looking at um, a timeline. A young man has the pressure of the future, an older man has the pressure of the past. As a young man, and I did start young, I was 15, that almost puts me in the category of child actor, I was very much aware that I needed to make a big noise to say, look at me, I'm here, I exist, I'm on the screen, I'm on the radar screen. I was jumping up and down, I was trying to be punk rock, I was trying to act out to get attention. And the movies are geared towards that. Wild at Heart, Vampire's Kiss, they look like that. But I've gone through my life experiences and now I'm hearing other sounds, not just punk rock. I'm hearing other sounds, perhaps what you may call mellower or I may call more sublime sounds that have just as much resonance. They're just 
not jumping up and down. And that's what I'm doing now. These are the kinds of movies that I want to make. I don't need to, to eat a cockroach. I need to express the truth in the, in the emotion of the scene. Rock and roll. I'll be giving the friendly finger. All right. Very nice to talk Cheers. to you, son. Nice to speak yeah. with you, yeah. I don't know if you've